Mackey. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 29th meeting of the Social Justice and Social Security Committee. We have apologies from our convener, Colette Stevenson, uh, this morning, and from Jeremy Balfour. Uh, Ros McCall is attending as a substitute for Jeremy Balfour. So, welcome, Ros. It's good to have you back. Um, and uh, we will be moving to uh, agenda item three, because we're first to agenda items where we're in private. So we now move to agenda item three, which is to agree to take agenda item seven in private. Are we all agreed to do so? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item four. Our next business today is the consideration of a Scottish statutory instrument, the Scotland Act 1998 Agency Agreement Specifications Order 2024. This instrument is subject to the negative procedure. The main purpose of this instrument is to specify certain functions exercisable in connection with winter heating assistance under Section 30 of the Social Security Scotland Act 2018. These functions relate to winter heating assistance for pensioners and not other forms of winter heating assistance that Scottish Ministers have previously introduced. The detailed arrangements for these functions will be set out in an agency agreement between the UK Government and the Scottish Government, and this instrument allows for such arrangements to be agreed. Do members have any comment to make on this instrument? Okay. Uh, there have been no comments. I invite the committee to agree that it does not wish to make any further recommendations in relation to this instrument. Thank you. We move uh, to agenda item five. Uh, our next agenda item of business this morning is the consideration of an affirmative statutory instrument, the Funeral Expenses Assistance Scotland Amendment Regulations 2024. This instrument is laid under the affirmative procedure, which means the Parliament must approve it before it comes into force. And I welcome to meeting Shirley Ann Somerville, Cabinet Secretary for Social Justice. Uh, good morning, Shirley Ann, and also welcome uh, your officials from the Scottish Government, Posse Musgrave, Team Leader, Early Years and Funeral Support and Barbara Hughes, lawyer, Scottish Government. Thank you to your officials for attending this morning. Also, um, following this evidence session, the committee will be invited uh, in the upcoming agenda item to consider a motion to approve the instrument. And I remind everyone that the Scottish Government officials can speak under this part of the meeting, but not in the debate which may follow. And I now invite the Cabinet Secretary to make a short opening statement. Thank you very much and good morning, convener. Since it launched in 2019, Funeral Support Payment has provided over £51.1 million of support to over 26,000 people on low income at a time when they need it most. The improvements we, that we are proposing in these regulations will provide further support to people who are struggling to pay funeral costs and will help to reduce the burden of debt that a person may face when paying for a loved one's funeral. The regulations before you today are evidence of the Scottish Government's commitment to the continuous improvement of our social security system. We have consulted with a range of stakeholders, including third sector organisations and funeral industry experts, in the development of this legislation. We are extending the definition of funeral to include alkaline hydrolysis as an alternative to burial or cremation. The Scottish Government recently consulted on whether alkaline hydrolysis should be introduced as a regulated form of body disposal, and 84 per cent of respondents were in favour. Introducing this amendment now will future-proof the regulations to ensure we can award funeral support payment for people who choose this, should it become available in Scotland. It will also be brought into scope for people who are eligible for assistance for a funeral abroad. In line with our values of dignity, fairness and respect, we are introducing an exceptional circumstance provision for funerals abroad. This will allow us to pay funeral support payments if there is a unique set of circumstances. For example, if disruption due to war or extreme weather events prevents a body from returning to the UK for a funeral. As recommended by the Scottish Commission on Social Security during their scrutiny of these regulations, Social Security Scotland will be equipped with robust guidance to support this provision. The regulations also support our commitment to protect the rights of EU citizens under the Withdrawal Agreement. Although Social Security Scotland are not aware of anyone missing out, these changes will clarify the regulations to ensure that people who are entitled to assistance to help pay for a funeral abroad before Brexit will continue to be entitled. 
To ensure more people get the correct level of assistance, we are taking away the current restriction on costs for funerals that take place out with the deceased's local area. Social Security Scotland will continue to apply a test to ensure costs are reasonable so that we retain value for money while removing any potential unfairness from the process. This means we will provide help with costs based on what is reasonable rather than where people lived. Finally, the regulations remove the provision to deny an application if there are funds to pay for a funeral available in the estate. Instead, those available funds will be deducted from the award amount. This change means that all cases will be assessed in the same way. We have engaged with the Scottish Fiscal Commission, who have confirmed that they anticipate no significant financial implications on spending for the Scottish Government as a result of these regulations. This is particularly welcome in this challenging fiscal period, given they offer further improvements for the people of Scotland at minimal costs. I would like to extend my thanks to the Scottish Commission on Social Security for their former scrutiny of the draft amendment earlier this year and for the recommendations which have strengthened the detail of the regulations before us today. And I welcome this opportunity to assist the committee in its consideration. Thank you, Convener. Uh, thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. We will move to uh, some questions that we, we have for you this morning. Um, and the committee was just wondering whether the regulations will make it more likely that people will apply for support with funeral costs out with the local area, given the changes that we're looking at this morning, and if so, has this been factored into the costs? I believe that these changes will uh, make it significantly more uh, likely that people will apply for support for funerals out with the local area. The internal analysis uh, that has been undertaken would um, estimate that the increased cost will be around £80,000 uh, per annum, so minimal uh, difference there. Uh, we are just, uh, introducing this change to make sure that people are not disadvantaged in effect, convener, ensuring that uh, people can choose the most suitable location, if it's even if it's not the closest to where the deceased lived. So, no, we don't think there will be much change, and we think the cost um, increase will be minimal. OK, that, that's helpful. Um, Rose McCall, would you like to come in? Yes, uh, th thank you, Convener, and uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Just to, to, to follow on from that and just to tease it out a bit, because you're talking about internal analysis, which I totally understand, but if we're going to make these changes, we need to make sure that we've got the right kind of um, statistical information that we get gather for that. So, uh, will Social Security... Uh, what information will Social Security Scotland publish on funeral support payments that are awarded out with local areas? And what pro process are you going to put in place for that? So we don't currently intend to publish information on funerals out with the local area, and that's because the data held by Social Security Social Security Scotland is not detailed enough to do so um, at this stage, but the agency will continue to review this when developing future publications. So we will keep this under active consideration with the possibility of, of, of putting that in place if need be. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Amy McNair. Good morning, Cabinet Secondary Officials. You touched on your opening speech about um, allowing funeral support uh, payment to be paid um, out with the UK. Um, what might be considered uh, exceptional circumstances? It, so, clearly, although there will be guidance there that will um, provide Social Security Scotland case managers the ability to, to assess, I think it's very important we don't get into a, a list of what is exceptional and what's not exceptional, because by definition, then, that's not exceptional. Um, but if I can give some examples um, uh, in my uh, er, um, opening uh, remarks, I talked about the disruption due to um, extreme weather, um, war, um, we may see um, um, areas where people uh, require uh, a funeral to be held, for example, within a certain time frame for religious reasons. Uh, so those are the types of, of, of situations where uh, the case managers will have that guidance to refer to. Uh, and, of course, there will be an escalation um, route within the agency to ensure that those decisions are taken um, at the right level and with the degree of sensitivity that is, of course, required in these circumstances. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Katie Clark. Good morning, Cabinet Secretary. What statistical information will Social Security Scotland publish on funeral support payment awarded for funerals out with the UK? So, uh, the number of awards um, that are made out with the UK is exceptionally small. Um, currently, it's less than 1% of all applications. So, that 
in essence means that the numbers are too small for the agency to provide data that's considered robust. Uh, so we currently have no plans to publish it based on that lack of robustness that's required for uh, official statistics. But that data uh, can be gathered and will be gathered for internal use. Um, and uh, officials have already engaged with Social Security Scotland to ensure uh, that that relevant data can be captured and uh, clearly there will be analysis um, internally um, around measuring the impact of those changes with the first data gathered scheduled six months after the regulations come into force. So although it's not robust enough for um, external publication, it will certainly be uh, used internally where, where that data um, is, is gathered already. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Paul O'Kane. Uh, thank you very much, convener, and good morning to Cabinet Secretary and officials. Um, in uh, her opening remarks, the Cabinet Secretary uh, mentioned alkaline hydrolysis and uh, the availability or the potential availability of the payment in order to cover that procedure. Uh, I, I think the Cabinet Secretary spoke about being ready, essentially, for that eventuality and the payment being, being possible. I, I just wonder to what extent has there been further work done on when the, the, the procedure of alkaline hydrolysis might be available um, and available, obviously, in terms of this payment and people who receive the payment and indeed what cross-government work there has been, because I appreciate it will touch on a number of different portfolios. So I just wonder if you might want to say something further on that. Uh, I'll, I'll add a little bit there, Convener, but if I can perhaps um, ask uh, that uh, my colleague, the Minister for Public Health, uh, perhaps writes with further details on that, because that is, that's, uh, as Mr Kane says, uh, that, that is uh, not within my remit. But certainly the development of the regulations to approve alkaline hydrolysis for use in Scotland uh, are ongoing, as I say, that sits uh, with another minister. Um, I know that this was um, touched upon and discussed in the cross-party group on funeral and bereavements um, in the past, so there's clearly um, a, an interest there and I wish to see movement on that. But if I can, convener, if you'll permit me, I'll, I'll uh, ask my colleague to, to write to the committee on that. OK. Uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Mr Keane, do you want to follow up on any of that? No, that would be, I think that would be helpful to committee if that was possible. OK. Uh, Liz Smith, MSP. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I don't have any issues with this uh, instrument whatsoever, and the Conservatives are very happy uh, with it. I think, Cabinet Secretary, I would like to just probe a little bit further on uh, some of the issues that I think arise from this kind of uh, situation. Namely, just to go back to what you were saying uh, in your Stage 1 um, presentation of the Social Security Bill and what the convener of the committee said at that time, namely, we have to ensure that there is value for money. And in turn, that value for money comes uh, assuming that there is a very effective impact assessment of the changes that we make to any of these things. And that, in turn, then is determined by the data that we have available. Now, you'll be aware, Cabinet Secretary, that the Finance Committee this morning has put out a very robust report about the need for much uh, greater uh, transparency and fiscal probity when it comes to the public finances. Could I just ask you, what, what is the Scottish Government doing to ensure that the measurement of the impacts of uh, changes that are made within the Social Security brief are helping those most in need and that we have the right data to be able to assess that? Uh, yeah, so on the aspect around the right data, um, that's uh, obviously something that committee has uh, discussed before. And as I, I've said to committee, this is an ongoing process within Social Security Scotland about being able to uh, provide more and more data um, as the, the system grows. So there's, a, a, um, as, as uh, you, you would expect, uh, you, there's a process within Social Security Scotland of having um, the system um, updated on a very regular basis and part of that updating um, doesn't just include a uh, readiness for a new benefit but also includes um, the improvement of uh, the data that can be collected uh, within that. So that's something that we take very, very seriously um, and we know that there is more to do and uh, that work uh, is ongoing because I think uh, you we all want to see uh, the uh, correct data 
um, being gathered by Social Security Scotland to allow us to be able to identify how the money is being spent and then what impact it's having, which takes me on to the, the first point you've made. That not only sits within Social Security Scotland or indeed the Scottish Government, uh, but there's a, a number of ways that we can look at uh, the outcomes um, and the impact. Uh, Professor Linda Bald, for example, uh, has done uh, a, a recent uh, piece of work looking at, at exactly this type of thing. So the data collection is key. Uh, that does uh, require us to continually build on what we have at the moment. Um, because there is more data that we would all like to see, government and a uh, committee, and then that impact is taken both within some of the analysis that's undertaken by the government um, in terms of statistical publications, but also um, in areas that Professor Bold, for example, I'd be happy. I'm sure the, the uh, committee um, is, is already aware of that work, but we'd be happy to, to provide some of those examples um, in, in due course as well. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think that's uh, very helpful because I think in, this is a, a huge area and given the Scottish Fiscal C uh, Commission's predictions over um, the, the fiscal spend, whether that's in social security or social care or health over the next 50 years, um, it's a pretty alarming picture. And I, I think in, in order to ensure that there is greater fiscal probity, I think we need to understand um, where money is being best spent. And that means being able to assess, this committee particularly, being able to assess where the impact is and ensuring that the data that uh, underlies that is as accurate as possible. So any um, efforts that the Scottish Government can make to inform this committee about where there are gaps in that data, I think would be very helpful. If I can, Kavina, just point to that, that £1.1 billion over block grant adjustment that mm. the Scottish Government um, does uh, invest in Social Security Scotland. Uh, clearly, a large part of that is on the Scottish Child Payment, uh, just under uh, half a billion pounds on the Scottish Child Payment. Uh, we also have uh, the funding which goes into um, child and adult disability payment, which again is above block grant adjustment and uh, the benefits that are not available in Scotland, uh, that are available in Scotland that are not available in the rest of the UK. For example, uh, young carers grant and parts the other parts of the five family payments. Uh, so I think Liz Smith points to um, a very important number, that 1.1 currently, um, and uh, expected uh, to grow. Um, and it's certainly something which uh, we are conscious of as a government, because it needs to be um, accounted for and paid for as part of every budgetary um, process. But I think it's important to committee to um, realise what that's for mm. um, and the impact it makes on uh, low-income families, uh, the disabled uh, and carers. Yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree with that, Cabinet Secretary. I, I just reflect upon the uh, Joseph Rowntree's re most recent report where they're making the point that it's actually quite difficult to measure uh, the policy, which they entirely approve of, as, as, as does this committee, um, and the actual impact that it has in terms of delivering a better outcome and uh, the you know, good management of the public finances. I think that's quite important. Um, as the committee deliberates over various uh, social security policies. i be able to provide further advice on that in writing. Convener, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Before we move to agenda item six, it might be worth putting on the record that in relation to the Scottish Child Payment, the committee did do a very brief inquiry in relation to that, and we very much welcomed the impact, the positive impact that the Scottish Child Payment was having, Cabinet Secretary, but we did identify the need for additional data, including that looking at Scotland and other approaches to tackling child poverty in England and doing some kind of longitudinal study in relation to that uh, to, to get additional evidence in relation to the benefits of the Scottish Child Payment. I just thought that was an appropriate time, uh, Ms Smith, to put that on the record. You don't have to have any reflections on that, Cabinet Secretary, but you're welcome to respond if you wish. A, a, a good plug for the committee's uh, previous work on that <laughs> convener, which I, I read with interest, and I think it's certainly something we're conscious for, particularly as we move forward with the um, development of um, the next uh, Child Poverty Delivery Plan. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Plug noted indeed. Uh, if there being no other questions, we will we'll now move to agenda item six, which is the formal consideration of motion S6M14591, that the Social Justice and Social Security Committee recommends that the Funeral Expense Assistance Scotland Amendment Regulations 2024 draft be approved. And I invite the Cabinet Secretary to speak to and move the motion. Nothing to add, just to formally move, convener. Okay. Do any members wish to make any comments at, at, at this stage? Um, 
Can I put one thing on, on the record, Cabinet Secretary, and that is just in relation to constituency interest I have, uh, and a lady called Julie Love, who started a charity called Death Abroad, You're Not Alone, and the real financial strains and emotional turmoil that those that lose loved ones overseas face uh, in, in relation to that, and that I'm aware of individuals who wish to repatriate bodies who have funerals overseas because they can't afford those repatriation costs, and just the general swirl, not just financial, but just the pathway to steer around, given the fact that funeral expense assistance is starting to look at, you know, supporting those who have lost loved ones overseas, it would be helpful, not as part of this statutory instrument, of course, but there's a bit of cross-cutting work between uh, social security and perhaps the Justice Directorate in Scotland who have looked at this previously, I think, based on not just points that I've raised myself, but I think Hannah Burdell, when she was a, an MP, and Angela Constance before she would return to, I think, Cabinet Secretary, uh, for, for justice. I just wanted to put that on the record because there seems to be a connectivity between funeral assistance for those that lose loved ones overseas and how we actually support them more widely. I'll, I'll say no more than that, but given we had the opportunity for a brief debate, I wanted to put some of that on the record. Are there any other members wishing to contribute before we pass back to the Cabinet Secretary? Uh, OK, Cabinet Secretary, to sum up and to respond to the debate, if you wish. Uh, no, Kimir, just to absolutely uh, just say that I note the remarks uh, that you've made and, and uh, the work that's gone on um, in uh, this area and uh, can assure you that we will continue to work across government, both social justice and justice, uh, uh, around uh, these issues. But I'm certainly delighted to play uh, my part in assisting uh, at least uh, some of those families uh, today. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. So the question is that motion SXM14519 in the name of Shirley Ann Somerville be approved. Are we all agreed? Okay. We are all agreed. Thank you. The committee will report on the outcome of the instrument in due course and invite the committee to delegate authority to uh, our convener, uh, if they return or otherwise myself, to approve the draft of any reports for publication. <laughs> Do you agree? That is agreed. Thank you very much. So, thank you, Cabinet Secretary, for giving your officials attendance today. That includes the public part of our meeting, and we'll now move into private to consider the remaining agenda item. Thank you.